Hi everyone, my name is Alex and in the last video that I created about Cursor AI and Anypoint Code Builder, we kind of created this Mule Best Practice template, which is pretty much just like a regular um, Mule application that is using some of the best practices. I would say like the basic best practices. And I even generated this readme with um, Cursor. So it's really cool. Uh, so like this is a project structure. We pretty much created the global.xml that has all of the global configurations. We have the mule best practice template, which is like the main application flow. It doesn't do anything. It just outputs uh, hello world in a JSON format. We have the resources. Um, so we have the local properties YAML and the dev properties YAML. So in this case, we are creating two different uh, properties files and these are YAML very important. I'm not using dot properties anymore because I don't know, I think this is a best best practice now. <laughs> so here it listed all the prerequisites that we need, how to install cursor, how to install new point code builder um, inside cursor, and then uh, the configuration, which is what we created, how to test the app. So run the application and then you can use curl to call it. And this is the expected response. Um, you also have to set up the EMV property because it is specified as local or dev. If you don't specify, it's just going to take local. And yes, PS, this readme was generated using cursor too. <laughs> really cool. Anyway, so we have this project. Now I am going to test if cursor can be smart enough to know that that is what I want as uh, like, I'm going to create another thing. So I'm just going to open downloads for now. And I'm going to see if cursor can know what I want. Um, so any point code builder, I'm going to make this bigger now. All right. I wonder if it can create a new one. Okay, let me see if I can create like a new one using the best practices. Um, create a mule project called testing cursor and use the best practices from this other mule project. All right, let's see if it knows what to do. First, let's create the basic project structure. Okay. Yeah, so it is going to create the whole thing. So for now, I'm not going to do that. Um, okay. Yeah, let's, let's uh, create the base thing ourselves. And then I'm going to ask it to do the other thing. Ah. It created the testing cursor, but it didn't open it. That's weird. Okay. Um, how do I just like open another, I guess, open? Uh, so I was in downloads and testing cursor. Where is testing cursor? There you go. Open. Okay. So it created the thing doesn't have any resources, any tests, anything. Okay. So cool. Um, it pretty much doesn't have any best practices because I mean, yeah, that's normal. So let's see, um, create a flow with an HTTP listener and add a transform message component. You can test this flow by making a get request there. All right, so HTTP listener transform and the HTTP listener config. Let's accept these. Um, and now let me take a look at the code. So we have the flow, main flow, HTTP listener, uh, response body. I don't think this is needed. Uh, transform message, output application JSON, message hello from Mule. This should work in theory. We can try it out. Wait, it's not going to work because it didn't create the thing in POM, the dependency in POM. 
right? Yeah, it didn't add the dependency in pump. That is one of the annoying things right here with cursor that it's not really adding the HTTP listener in the pump. So you kind of have to remember that if, you, if you're using this. Add the HTTP dependency in pump XML and make sure it is compatible with my mule runtime and Java versions. It's going to try to add the mule runtime version right there, but yeah. Okay. So you're, let's reject this and let me just like try this again at the HTTP in bomb and make sure. Okay. So don't make sure. Oops. Add the, the HTTP dependency in POM. Okay. Looks like it added it. Let me just make sure. Dependencies. Okay. So this, I don't know if this is going to be compatible with what I have, but we'll see accept file and yeah, it's not going to be compatible, but that is all right. Um, let me just, and it is annoying that I have to do this manually, but hopefully that is the problem that we are trying to solve. So hopefully we can solve that. So, okay. One, 10, three. All right. Perfect. Um, did it apply it? Yeah. One, 10, three. Cool. So, okay. So now we can try to run it and see if it runs. Deployed. I didn't even see the configuration. Uh, okay, localhost 8081, perfect. Uh, so let me just create a new terminal and just do it with curl, localhost 8081 slash what API? Slash API, I guess. Hello from you. Okay, so this works, awesome. Uh, how do I minimize you? Oh, here. All right. So this is working. Now let's see if we can add some best practices whoops, from this other thing. Okay. Modify my project to have best practices. You can base on this project here. I feel like it didn't really understand what to do. So, mm -hmm. um, testing cursor. So what did you do in testing cursor? Oh, you created like, I just wanted the base things. I like, didn't want like anything really fancy. So, well, it took out the path. Um, and renamed the config ref. I don't know why I did this. Like, I don't need this. Um, let's reject this. Uh, oh, an editor handler. No. Like, I just wanted you to move this. <laughs> uh, reject all, accept all. Oh, boy. So, okay, did that there. I don't like that. Then in the palm, it keeps adding the mule runtime version and it keeps adding the wrong one. So, okay, this is not working. Um, mule configuration module, but it changed my version, my HTTP connection version. Local properties. Um, like it knew that it had to add the local properties, but didn't actually like only this would be useful. This is not useful. Um, the properties or maybe like the logging level, maybe, but it's not really changing it anywhere. I think, um, in the environment property, that's not really Useful. Uh, so configuration property, the local pro uh, no, no, like it didn't know. Nope. 
No, you you don't know what you did. Okay, reject all. You clearly don't know what you did. Okay. So to answer, no, the best practice, <laughs> it's not really creating the best practice um, coming from, like if I just provide a GitHub repo, it doesn't actually know what to do. Because if we take a look at everything that it just did, uh, no, that's already the thing that I already did. Okay, so here, uh, first, let's create the proper directory structure and configuration files. So mule resources Java, but it should already be there. Like, why are you modifying that? And then the environment specific YAML files, sure. And then the global configuration file. Um, update the main flow to use the new configurations, right? Let's update the POM XML to include the necessary dependencies. Like this is where you're lo losing me. Um, environment specific configurations, global configuration main flow improvements, dependency management error handling. Yeah. I wonder if I just create kind of a doc or a blog post where I can reference to it and say like, see, see what's being listed here and apply that as best practice. Maybe that would work in that way. Like you can generate just a document or something. Because like, what do we have here in context? Do we have files and folders, code, docs, git, past chats, cursor rules, terminals. I don't know what's linter errors and web. So what if I select web, then what? Oh, that's just like taking the thing from there. Anyway, like I can just like paste, like I just did, right? I, I pasted the GitHub repo. Maybe I can just paste a blog post from somewhere that will have this documentation and I will be able to put that there. So maybe it can be like even from the docs, like the official mules of docs, if they create one site with all of the best practices to like feed this LLM and then like you can add other contexts like your company specific ones, maybe this will work. All right, so in the next video, I will try something like that. I will create a blog post and I will reference to it to see if that improves, but it's not smart enough to just take the GitHub um, project that I just did and be like, okay, this is what you need. So maybe like set of instructions will work. All right, see you in the next video with that experiment. Bye.